Welcome to the Sellernomics Podcast, sharing valuable tips and information in the Amazon and e-commerce space. Each week, we deliver the best interviews with some of the top Amazon personalities in the industry to help you grow your business. Today's episode is brought to you by Gatita, the global leader in FBA auditing and reimbursements. And now, here is your host, Rob Stanley. Hey everyone, welcome to the Selenomics podcast. And you, if you're watching this, you might notice that my background is a little different today because I am actually uh, remote in Miami right now for a couple of meetups coming up. But I've got a great episode. I wanted to make sure to get this person on. Welcome, Greg Reynolds, founder CEO of Zon Support. What's up, Greg? Um, having a good day. Having a good day. Thank you. Great. That's great. So Greg's got a great topic that a lot of people are going to be interested in. It's always a big topic that I like to talk about uh, coming from that whole feedback area of the world uh, in a while back. So today we are going to be talking about Amazon product inserts are your sleeper strategy. And that's that's a bold statement there, Greg. But uh, I know you can back it up because Greg and I uh, a week ago had lunch together and had just a really great conversation back and forth. But uh, Greg, why don't you start us off a little bit with uh, Amazon sellers are always mindful of compliance. Are inserts actually approved by Amazon? That that question gets asked a lot. So give us an well, answer on that. Well, <laughs> can, I, can I just say that they're not explicitly unapproved or disapproved or, or whatever. But I mean, their catch-all statement is always present. Okay, basically, you know, you must not do anything to divert the customer from their platform. So I, I kind of figure this is like crossing the road. You know, my mother always told me, you know, you shouldn't cross the road because, you know, something could happen. But we all do, don't we? So we kind of, you know, look both ways and then uh, and then look again to be sure uh, and, and cross because, you know, life is about rules, but it's also about practicality. So what I really try to emphasize to people with um, with the product insert is it's, it's kind of, look, it's all about your positioning and it's all you know what your intent is sitting behind it so if i can kind of dive in here and first talk about you know what it's not okay so your product insert it should no longer be viewed as a so-called strategy to try and you know gain customer data for ongoing marketing that, that time has long since passed you know back in in 2014 15 when we started off sure we we could do anything tongue in cheek, we could say anything and uh, sales came through. But, you know, over time, what you've got to realize is customers have got more savvy, you know, more sophisticated. Uh, you know, maybe weary is, is a better word. I mean, you know, all these new edge entrepreneurs who've been piling into Amazon and other e-commerce platform for years all have their own angle and what they're trying to do, uh, you know, arguably to try to maneuver customers into a position that benefits them. Um, you know, the other absolute classic in the old days was, you know, it was this sob story, you know, uh, we're a mum and pop business, we've got 10 kids, we've got no money, this is our one chance to get ahead, blah, blah, blah. And, it, and you know, what you've got to realize is uh, e-commerce, even in general, it's not all about you, it's actually about your customer. And what your product insert is there to do, it's, it's there to serve your customer. So. If they have an issue, um, they need to be heard, right? That They certainly don't want to be uh, felt that they are obliged to say nothing. Because I, I, I do say to clients, look, if you haven't got any problems at all with your customers and nobody's reaching out, I kind of, in a way, feel sorry for you because if you can't get some sort of interaction going with a customer, uh, it's hard to really, you know, add value to serve, to get a relationship going. And and position yourself for a, for a five star review, obviously. So, what I'm trying to say here is is what you need to do is take a giant step back uh, and step away from any angles that are maneuvering you down the the, the slippery slope to get this email from uh, Amazon. And let me read it out. And we've had a couple of clients who've got this email because um they've really pushed some boundaries and we're like oh, not so sure and some have got away with blue murder and others have got this email let me read this to you we understand that you have that you may have used inserts flyers coupons brochures 
or similar materials included inside or on the product packaging requesting a favorable review or rating or offering incentives to post a review or rating. That's a massive sentence, isn't it? As a result, we have removed the listings at the bottom of this message. Now that is just not what you want. So what I'm, I've tried to really emphasize at the start here is, is what your product insert isn't. So, so let's now spin it onto the positive and, and look at really positioning, really what you, are, what you need to be focused on um, with a product insert. I mean, it's a very direct way for you to actually engage with your customers off Amazon or arguably off Walmart, off Shopify, off wherever. But most people listening are probably uh, on Amazon or have started on Amazon. And Amazon has these very tight rules and regulations and everything else to really try and control sellers. So let, let's just focus in the main uh, on Amazon. Uh, but a, a product insert can make a significant difference um, difference, you know, when you're trying to work to resolve a customer issue, the customer opens the product, finds there's a problem, you know, is there an easy way to contact you? And, and this is because so many sellers actually don't respond. Uh, you, you'll be surprised the number of sellers who, who say, well, Amazon manages all the customer service, there's, there's nothing I need to do. And sure, they, they certainly do jump in these days and do a lot of stuff where we, uh, we all might not agree with, uh, you know, but none, nonetheless, the whole, the whole reason for being behind your product insert is to try and be there, you know, in, in, in case you're needed. Uh, and the, the prime spot has to be having it sitting on top of the product. I mean, if that's practical, that, that's absolutely where you need to have this card, this fold out, this uh, whatever it is, to try and and uh, and engage with your customers, does that kind of make sense? Yeah, I like that. Uh, that's good yeah. information, and I think it's pretty clear. I mean, there's there's a lot of rules on what not to do, and I think people need to just be be mindful of those rules. You, you know, uh, one of the best things I see is the the warranty cards without without offering like uh, extra money or anything. Like, hey, we'll extend your warranty. Here's a QR code. And as long as that takes them to an actual warranty page where they fill out a warranty, still no offers to, hey, leave a review and get money back or any or free product or whatever, just an honest warranty card. Like, hey, we'll extend your warranty if you go here and sign up. Just sure. something real basic and simple. You yeah. In that form, it, you can put email. You can even say email is required. And now you've picked up their email. Now, once they've signed up for that as a warranty, and they gave you the email, then you know you now have their email, which you could market to, and and you know that is not uh, you know that's not outside their TOS from what I understand and what I've read, Greg. And correct me if I'm wrong. So sure. you can do the warranty type uh, approach. Yeah, yeah, you can. And and a lot of people say to us, look, well, you know, what about printing the details on the, on the packaging? And oh yeah, um, and you know, you know, we say look. You know, not on the lid of your packaging. You know, not not on the base of your packaging, and and why? And and for those for those uh, people who who are watching this on video, and I'll describe it on uh, on um, on on here. Uh, what I what I've got in my hand here is an outer package uh, from vonchef.com, right? Who've got their name really right up front and center, all on the box. Uh, and basically what it has is their brand and it has their QR code in the biggest font that you've ever seen uh, just to try <laughs> to make sure that Amazon uh, kind of get it right and say, look, we've decided what's in this box, okay? So that's that's their, their outer, outer packaging. So here's their inner packaging, which is a nice display box, and it really has not got a lot of marketing on it at all, and along the top, it's got a, uh, a way to, to contact them through social media. So what I want to say to you is then if you're opening the box to try and pull out the product, right, then your focus is actually inside the box. You're pulling the, the, uh, you know, the, the, the coffee maker that I pulled out of this box. You're pulling that out. You want the product insert actually loose and sitting on top of the product because what happens is the display box or whatever gets cast to the side. Okay, sometimes 
people grab a product and the and the stuff that's inside and put it somewhere and everything goes out in the trash and they might come back to it later. Nobody is going to cart around um, a box and think, oh, you know, maybe I, maybe I need to keep that box. And if I showed you what I, I think it was a 12-inch wok came in, it's, it's a bigger box than Ben-Hur. So, you know, it's no good having your, a lot of detail on the box expecting customers to be uh, going to keep the packaging. Really what you need to do in our experience, and this is if this is practical, there's always exceptions, right? If it's practical, you want the product insert, <clears throat> excuse me, actually sitting, you know, on, on top of the product. Um, and, and that ensures that uh, it either sits with the product or somebody's going to throw it next to their computer or put it somewhere, or like with all of our instruction manuals, we just chuck them in the cupboard or in the drawer, right? So you hope it's going to end up somewhere. And so really, you know, as long as you're doing that sort of thing, um, it, it just makes sure that it's available to you. And, and we haven't even started to talk about the, the, the content yet. So the, the, prime, the prime spot is absolutely, um, you know, a loose one sitting on top of the product. And, you know, you've mentioned um, QR codes. Sure. All right, hold, hold on, Greg. We're, we're going to jump into QR codes and go a lot more extensive into that right after this quick commercial break. All right. Today's episode is brought to you by Gatita, the global leader in FBA auditing and reimbursements. Get $400 in free FBA reimbursements at gatita.com slash sellernomics. Yeah, so be sure to head on over to gatita.com forward slash sellernomics for that $400 without any fees or anything, your first $400. And once again, I got Greg Rendles. He is founder of Zon Support, and we're talking today about Amazon product inserts are your sleeper strategy. And Greg, I, I, sorry to interrupt you there. We had to quick, get that quick commercial break in, but oh, I do want to talk to you more about the QR codes. And, and you know, those are getting really popular. And let's talk a bit about those because... There's kind of, and I was touching on a little bit, there's kind of appropriate landing pages and, and violating TOS landing pages when it comes to QR code. What have you seen and what kind of things should people be uh, paying attention to on the QR codes if they're creating one? Look, it, where is it directed to and for what purpose, right? Now, Amazon can and do follow these down to the wire, which is how one of our clients got pinged, Okay. You should also know that Amazon buy products and they experience your follow-up. Now, that's kind of a scary thought, isn't it? So what I say to people is whatever you're doing, do it with a view that it's totally, completely and utterly transparent to Amazon and you'll be fine. Do it because you think you're smart, which you probably are, and you think you found a way to maneuver around Amazon or the system or whatever and, and to get an advantage. advantage. And it's just going to end in, in tears. So uh, before the pandemic, right, there was around, you know, the stats said there's around 45% of, uh, uh, of Americanos, as I call Americans, right, who, who really got QR codes. Uh, in some countries, they're really, really extremely well known. Uh, in Asia, for example, uh, you know, there's a good core here in the US, but not as strong as in other places. These days, more and more people have got into it, right? Because we go to a restaurant, there's a QR code for ordering because you've got to get a takeout or for whatever reason. So the the, uh, the uptake is, is a lot greater. So they are a great uh, advantage and a great way to steer people instantly and quickly to help. But the landing page, Rob, that you talk about to, to where they're going to has to be an entire 110% focus on serving your customer so if it's to uh you've got an instruction manual for example it might be in the box you know you can have a qr code right it'll take you through the same instructions right so never on a landing page or never where you take your customer do you take them to somewhere with a coupon a deal an offer a buy one get one free and uh Give us a good review and we'll PayPal you your purchase price, right? That still sits around out there. So, so as long as the QR code is going, you know, where it should be to serve the customer and, and not intended to direct the customer off the Amazon platform. In other words, it's there to serve them. That's fine. And to your point, Rob, absolutely. Yeah, you can have your website on there. Of course you can, all right? You can have a, a, an ambivalent, a, a very neutral you know, email address, you know, 
support at, well, Gatita is our sponsor, so it could be support at gatita.com, at gatita.com, okay? Support at selenomics.com. Um, so that's fine, but that is as far as you want to go. Does that, that, does that kind of answer your question there? Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's great information because, uh, you know, people, they, how many times do you hear this, Greg? Well, all these big brands are doing it and all these big brands are giving away discounts and buy one, giving free and all this stuff. I mean, big whoop de do. It only, you know, it only takes one time you've built up this giant company and you spent all this money and all these resources to build up your product and your brand. And you're going to lose your entire company or business over one little card or one little TOS because you were trying to get a, you know, a few extra sales. Uh, the product will speak for. Have I still got you there, Rob? So, so let me jump in and 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 uh, and carry on here for a bit. Um, so, what I'm saying is the uh, in summary that the the QR code, as long as it's taking you somewhere where it's adding value to the customer, uh, then you know you're on the right track. Um, if you're not sending it, uh, sending the customer to, to some value add, which is not asking for information or an advantage, uh, you, you are totally on, on the wrong track, okay? So the other thing is some people try to be a little bit smart and say, look, with the instruction manual, uh, you know, maybe I could just put the product in, insert or the information on the insert um, with it. Look, we're, we're absolutely not a, not a keen fan of that at all. Because if you think of this from a customer viewpoint, especially um, a male, I mean, you know, do we do instruction manuals for starters? So really, you know, you want the product insert to sit on the top of the product if it's practical. You know, you understand that the, the zone the customer in relates to either excitement to expectation or practicality. I mean, it depends what the product is. If it's a kitchen spatula, I just want a kitchen spatula. If it's um, a gift that I've bought for somebody, I'm having a quick look to see if it looks all right, then, then you, you've got a different viewpoint. But underlying what's sitting in here is, does it look like what I was expecting? And, and if not, this is your sleeper strategy awakening. So this is what you've put into your product way at the get-go when you first launched it or relaunched it. And it's just sitting there just in case uh, you know, there's an opportunity for you to engage with your customer. So, so let me really cover here. This is how to position yourself. Okay. You're a seller who has products online and elsewhere. Now, online, Amazon, Shopify, Walmart, Etsy, whatever it is, and elsewhere, and bricks and mortar. The positioning of your product insert really needs to open you across every possible channel. And a quick diversion here, and I'll tell you why. Many years ago, when I was first starting this business, 2017, one of my first clients, some rather large executive from a rather large company, his wife bought the product as a gift. He loved, absolutely loved the gift. And as my new client told me, when he'd opened it, and he saw that the product insert, everything in there was nothing to do with Amazon, nothing to do with anybody, he realized, wow, if this seller has got a ton of that product, I could actually grab that now and it could go straight into our big box store. And that's what happened. Within six weeks, a whole massive amount of inventory that the client had sitting in the US was in a big box store. And that was because there was nothing in there which was branded to the platform that he'd bought it from. And I think that's a, it's a fantastic lesson to learn. And we also have another client who over time has morphed uh, into sporting goods stores. And by morphing through there and his product insert is ambivalent, 
he brings a ton of product in and it doesn't matter. Does it go into Amazon? Is it going onto Walmart? Or is it going into these uh, sporting goods stores? There's no compromise because uh, the product insert there uh, serves, if that makes sense. So you understand you're on Amazon, you understand that you're in bricks and mortar professionally. And so let's come down to what this thing should look like, okay? Uh, your product insert, it needs to be appealing. It needs to be on a kind of, on a good quality card stock, not paper. It's going to be handled a million times before it's even put in your product. Um, so go easy on the graphics. It's not a marketing exercise. You know, you're trying to engage with your customer. Okay, the most powerful words on the universe, even when you're in trouble, is to say, well, thank you. Thank you for that feedback or thank you for whatever it is. So the, the first words you want to have in there is something related to thank you. For example, thanks for trusting us with your purchase. All right. We really appreciate you buying from us. You know, a, a couple of sentences about you, all right, about your brand, a, about a, a morph across the two. Um, just something, just a tiny little bit of a, a thanks for trusting us with your purchase and some kind of engagement. The, the next part of the product insert, we don't do problems. If something is not right, okay, if something is not right, that is the most powerful way of, of flagging to somebody, uh, here's where I'm going, you know, if, if there's a problem, okay? Contact whoever you purchased it from, or you can email on us, you, you can email us on support at, uh, you know, yourbrandname.com. And, and here's an important thing to, uh, you know, to remember. Make sure that the email address you use on your product insert is solely and only um, sitting there for making sure that the customer's email is going to come direct to you, okay? Absolutely direct to you. So don't have it as a, as a catch-all, which is going to many other um, uh, serving other people. You just want the an email unique to your product insert. So you know if, a, if I get an email and it comes through support at or help at or orders at, I know that's generated from my product insert. So I know this is a customer who has my product. Um, so what you're saying to them is, look, uh, an order number or a store receipt or a picture really helps. Uh, and we promise a quick reply. So this is walking through what needs to uh, be sitting in your product insert, okay? So we've had the thanks for trusting us with your purchase. Uh, we've had the if something is not right, and now we're going to go into something that's a little bit delicate, right? It's, it's this whole review thing that's going on. And the wording that we find uh, the best here is a small favor if you purchased online. Please consider leaving us a review. They help other buyers learn more about our products. Now, look, we're the most conservative business on the planet. We don't want to take clients anywhere near to potentially where there might be a, a, a little bit of a problem or some angst with anybody. So a small favor if you purchased online, nobody uh, can, can take offense of that. And the positioning also is, well, hang on, if I didn't purchase online because I bought this from a, from a retailer, uh, that's okay. It doesn't apply to me. It's not, not like, well, how come, you know, there's no discord. Why is this in my box? Okay. Please consider leaving us a review. That's fine. Uh, they help other buyers help. They help other buyers learn more about our products. Now we did have words in there, you know, they help us a lot or, or it really makes a big difference to our business. And our legal eagles read through and they read things into things that I'd never think. And they're like, you know, Greg, that, that's a little bit of encouragement. That's, uh, that's, that's too much personalization. You, you know what I'm talking about here, Rob, don't you? Yeah. It's that fine yeah. line. Yeah. Yeah. We always talked about avoiding that if statement, right? If you had a problem, if this. So you got to be super careful on the wording. Yeah. I know exactly what you mean, Greg. Oh, and it was so easy in the old days. If you've got a problem, email me. If it's yeah, exactly. okay, leave me a five star review. You know, it's quite it's it's kind of quite simple there, isn't it? Yeah. It's definitely it's definitely changed. And and speaking of thank yous, thank you, Greg. I had there was a hiccup here at uh 
my uh, hotel and uh, I lost my internet connection. So Greg took over for a little bit until I got back on. But uh, Greg, why don't we take a quick commercial break and let's come back and sure. uh, kind of, since I was off for a little bit, you can fill me in a little bit what we covered, make sure we uh, pick things right back up in a couple seconds here. Hold on. Sure. Did you know that Amazon probably owes you money for FBA reimbursements? Get $400 in free FBA reimbursements at katita.com slash sellernomics. Yeah, so a big thank you to Greg Reynolds for picking up when I got dropped off of the of my own podcast uh, here at the hotel. Uh, that's what happens when we work remote, right? So, uh, yeah. Greg, I, I, I think the last thing I was asking you was, um, if I'm not mistaken, and you may have gone a little further than that, but I was talking to you a little bit about the warranty cards and somehow I, sometimes they're not really needed because in the sense of like if you have a kitchen spatula, uh, you don't really need to necessarily warranty that. So I think, did you cover that? And then I, it sounded like you were also describing maybe what should and shouldn't be on uh, some of the uh, cards, the insert cards that go in. Uh, yeah. So I kind of lost my train of thought where we were, but uh, what was the that's, next? Uh, that's, okay. that, that's exactly where we're coming to. So perfect. You know, the, the, the focus of your product insert is not to ask for reviews. It's, it's like just, it's simply there to engage with your customer. And I say, look, think of getting engaged for a while before you propose. Yeah, I know there's yep. some folks who meet and get engaged and married on the first date or whatever it is. You know, there's always an exception, exception in life, okay? So you, your review request that's sitting there is, is kind of almost casual. It's almost, you know, a, a by the way. And, and so coming into the product inserts, what we're wanting to do is to add something to your product insert to get you outside the first sales doctrine. Now, this is yeah. really this is really what this is all about. Um, and uh, let me just tell you what you you may already know, or it might, might be just kind of interesting. The first sales doctrine actually dates back to 1908, and it's sometimes referred wow. to the as the first right of sale or the first sale rule. And um, it's only for Americanos, right? This only works uh, in the in the U.S. And so basically anybody can resell a product they purchased and use the brand name, but it can't be materially different to the original. So in other words, if the brand owner, right, if their sale can offer some sort of additional value that only they can provide, it takes the product outside the, the first sales doctrine. And, you know, without a doubt, an, a warranty, Rob, or an extended warranty is... Mm -hmm is the easiest mechanism, all right? For example, yep. you know, we stand by our product and offer a 12 month extended warranty provided you purchase it directly from us or our authorized agent. So now you're on the, on the pathway of not only servicing the customer and trying to get some engagement going on, but, you know, walking them outside the, the first sales doctrine and, you know, giving your brand some additional level of protection that you need. Um, and, and again, the wording is, is quite critical here. Uh, in the unlikely event of a problem, we will either pay the shipping back to us for repair or replace it for you. Now, that's nonsense. We know, we know we're not going to do that, but the, the legal guy has said, look, we want something in here which makes it really, really clear. So if we end up going and rubbing shoulders against Amazon on this issue, we can basically say quite clearly, well, you know, there's an option here to ship it back for repair uh, or there's an option here to replace. You know, a reseller cannot offer this. They are clearly, you know, well out, well outside the, the, the first sales doctrine. And this is where your QR co code might go or this is where your, uh, your, um, your link to your brand website slash warranty will take them. And it's got to be to a professional warranty template. You know, you need the date of purchase. You need to have it headed up store name or e-commerce site. Because if Amazon are going down this road or you, you, you end up rubbing shoulders with Amazon, everything is very transparent. Everything is very clear. Okay. The product, the model number, et cetera, et cetera the order number, uh, if applicable, never use order ID. Amazon brought that in. I don't know anybody else on the planet who uses the terminology order ID. And as I say, we want our product insert to be agnostic, to be completely neutral. It could go onto any any platform whatsoever. So, and and if the warranty won't work, because I know the warranty on a kitchen spatula is a real 
<laughs> it's kind of a real <laughs> challenge, isn't it? Right? Um, yeah. Think what's relevant for your audience. Okay, uh, is it an ebook? Um, is it care instructions? Uh, you know, is it a glass product? You don't want to scratch the glass or, or whatever it might be. Uh, is it something along? You know, um, tips for tips for best use. Uh, you know, a, a kitchen spatula. Maybe you're going to get a, away with an ebook with some great recipes or, or something like that. You, you're trying. You're trying to set yourself up to have some sort of defense here. You're also trying to set yourself up to have some sort of value uh, relationship, um, you know, that's going with your customer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I like that. that. That's great information. So once again, I got Greg Reynolds, founder, CEO of Zon Support, talking about Amazon product inserts are your sleeper strategy, which I, is always a great topic. Uh, so I do kind of have a little bit of a two part question for you, though, Greg. Uh, what about, and, and, and you may, have, we sort of covered this a little bit, but what about like coupons? You know, we, we talked a little bit about the coupons, uh, a little bit earlier, but let's talk a little bit about coupons. And then let's also talk a bit about inserts as far as how effective are they and how effective are they in the sense of either trying to get the person to sign up via the warranty? What have you kind of seen? So maybe cover both of those for us there, Greg. Sure. Sure. Okay. So deals and coupons yeah just don't do it i <laughs> love it yay just don't do just it don't do it guys <laughs> you know i mean i i bought a coffee maker right i bought a coffee maker i needed a coffee maker that's all i needed right if you're going to put an offer uh in there for all the other gadgets that you sell and it's not of interest to me i'm i'm, I'm not going to engage right I'm a kind of a sophisticated guy, right? I know what I'm doing, okay? I'm just not interested. So you throw these sort of things in there and it just rubs Amazon up so much the wrong way. It's like, wow, you know? And when they find it or if they take exception to it, they swatch it like a fly. So you've spent all this time and effort and, and everything else to, to get this one sale. Uh, and and this, this is my very strong personal view, right? Um, I don't own Amazon, right? Uh, I don't. I don't know what the underlying strategies are. I've got a good idea. Sometimes I don't know what they are, but that's beside the point. But what I'm saying is, simply take the sale, add value to the customer, and try and engage. And to get addresses, to do marketing, to do everything else, it's called social media. It's called websites. It's called Google search. That that is where you're going to drive. Uh, a loyal band of followers. You're not going to drive them very easily uh, with a, a deal offered in a box for other products. And I only wanted a kitchen spatula, so I'm not interested anyway. Is that kind of too blunt? I I like it. I think I think that's a perfect saying. I mean, just don't do it. it it's it's absolutely perfect. Now, Greg, you, the other part of that question was what what kind of results have you guys seen? Like uh, you know, from people doing warranties, what can people kind of expect uh, for people coming and signing up for their extended warranty, which I always love. I think that's a great approach is, you know, maybe not on the spatula, but you know what? Why not on a spatula? You never know. You know, maybe you give a lifetime, you know, lifetime warranty on a spatula or something like that. If you're so confident in the product and you know, it'll be good. Heck, I would probably sign up for a lifetime. What's the odds of people really holding on to those that long and getting you up? I know we you, you can do, but on that point, and, and and some of our clients have sold. So when you're offering lifetime stuff and everything else, then then when these um, aggregators and everything and, and, and others come in, they're like, oh, there's a liability uh. here, and they're they're wanting to discount or they're wanting to to put something there. So I, I just encourage people if the warranty is logical for the product, right? Then gotcha. follow through with a warranty, and if the warranty isn't then just drop down into another value add, right? Because sometimes I just get sick of the kitchen spatulas that we've got and I see another new one, a nice color or size or whatever, I'm going to buy it. There's nothing wrong with the other one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So so basically, if you just if you treat it like that, and also then if you do rub up against uh, Amazon over this, um, it, it's kind of really clear that the the intent was to offer value to the customer and not to gain an address and do anything with it. For heaven's sake, even on your warranties, 
And, you know, Rob, the uptake on, on some of these warranties is, is very, very, very low. But the uptake on our uh, electronics clients is, mm. is strong, is strong, okay? So just take it that the idea of this warranty is to get that connection going with the customer. This is purely the only thing. It's not to market to them, just to get that connection. So when they have a problem down the line, right, and the handle comes off this, uh, this uh, coffee maker, which is what happened to our, our last one, um, because it got too hot and it just kind of somehow just, you know, c came apart. Um, wow. Then you remember, oh, yeah, yeah, there was that warranty thing. Then, then you, the engagement you're going to get with somebody, it, it's because there's an issue or, or they want you to help and resolve them. Then, then you're on another pathway, right? Then you're on the pathway to, to resolve it, delight them and, and possibly earn a five-star review. But it's never... Uh, in our really conservative view, I hasten to add, to try to get a database to engage with the customers. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I like that. And uh, so one question I do want to talk to you about, but we will take a quick uh, commercial break. But coming back, we're going to ask Greg a little bit more information. A lot of people are starting to not switch, but also sell on Walmart. And let's talk a little bit about insert cards when it comes to selling on Walmart right after this quick break. Did you know that Amazon probably owes you money for FBA reimbursements? Get $400 in free FBA reimbursements at Katita.com slash Sellernomics. Yeah, so for the $400 in free FBA reimbursements, head over to Katita.com forward slash Sellernomics. And once again, I got Greg Reynolds, founder, CEO of Zon Support, talking about Amazon product inserts are your sleeper strategy, and they sure are. Now, the question I just asked before the break was, talking about Walmart. A lot of Amazon sellers, their next marketplace they sell on is Walmart. What is sort of the strategy or TOS regarding inserts when it comes to Walmart, Greg? I think Walmart has got a, a template that they're following. On this side, they've got everything that Amazon says and do and they believe thinks. And on the other side, they've got their positioning of where they want to be as hard or they see the value in that or, or they, they want to go another route. Uh, and, and so if I take you back in the earlier conversation and nobody could guess it so I can say it, the, the, the rather high up guy who bought our new client's product, okay, was in Walmart. And this is back in 2017, for goodness sake, right? The guy was so overstocked, it was embarrassing. So I'm talking about, you know, a couple of 40 foot containers back in the, that day, right? That within six weeks had gone into Walmart. So have the same strategy, have the same strategy, right? What you want to do is your product insert is there to serve the customer. It's to say thank you, right? It's to engage if something's not right, okay? It's to mention a review, right? If it's uh, bought online and it's to take, is to take your product outside the first sales doctrine because there's resellers and I don't know what else already on on uh, Walmart. So I figure if you do everything that's totally compliant as much as you can walking across the Amazon street, then it's a sitter. You, you aren't going to run into a problem with Walmart. And again, you know, we know what it's like these days to even get a container down here to, to ship out. You really want your product sitting in uh, your 3PL and they can go whichever direction you want. Yeah. Not, well, this has got to go into Amazon because I've kind of done this to suit them, but I think I can get away with more on Amazon. You really want an e-commerce business that's a cookie, cutter, a, a cookie cutter approach. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. That That's uh Good information because you know a lot of people are transitioning to also selling on walmart so that's good to know kind of where their thought process is as far as you know walmart compared to amazon are they sort of following the same tos are they mimicking what amazon's doing so we've talked a lot today about insert cards and greg reynolds has been just a wealth of information on insert cards so greg with that being said uh, you know, are you guys providing, is on support providing a service for doing insert cards? Like, uh, is that something you guys do? Look, we, we, we did look at that and, and we do help our, our clients with some of this, but really, uh, it, it's not in our wheelhouse. 
Um, so, so what what we've done is we've got a a, um, a a process, eight steps, which I've pretty much covered a lot of that um, content um, today. Uh, that that uh, anybody who's uh, listening or, or watching uh, us can simply uh, go to um, gatita dot uh, com uh, slash um, what am I saying? Zonomics. Zon, Zon Sorry, support. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's zonsupport.com so, forward slash like, Katita. Yes. Yeah. So if you if you simply go onto that uh, onto that link, www.zonsupport slash Gatita, what that will do is will that will bring you into us and automatically we will send you out our latest uh, product insert guide. And and that's really got the guideline. And then because everybody is a little bit different. Uh, everybody's uh, risk profile uh, is a little bit different. And it kind of says, well, these are the whole, this is what it's all about. Now you make your value judgment. Yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. So once again, if, if anybody did miss it, uh, for those watching, it is at the bottom of the screen, but it's zonsupport.com forward slash Gatita, which is Z-O-N-S-U-P-P-O-R-T.com forward slash Gatita, G-E-T-I-D-A, uh, zonsupport dot com for slash Katita. And uh, once again, I, Greg Reynolds from Zon Support. He's founder, CEO of Zon Support. Uh, it's been amazing having you on. Sorry for the little hiccup and thank you for picking up uh, for me there on my, my work, my no new, new thing of working remote a lot of this month. Uh, lots of trade shows, albeit all of them, of course, at the Katita booth uh, since I'm chief market officer. But Greg, amazing having you on. Uh, absolutely incredible talk a week ago when we had lunch. Yeah. Uh, you know, just lots of great information out there. And, and I just was really excited today to have Greg on talking about, you know, inserts because it's such a big topic. So, uh, Greg, if I missed anything else, feel free to jump in and uh, obviously be sure to check out zonsupport.com forward slash Gatita. Uh, there's great information there uh, regarding the inserts like he just talked about. And of course, you know, Zon Support, if you guys are in need of support for your Amazon business, uh, give a little more plug because you guys are a uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, a U.S. Um, support people. So the people that support the businesses uh, that need somebody to help with support, they're using U.S.-based Americans to actually yeah. do the support. Is that right? Yeah, right? yeah. All, all the team are Americanos. I'm the one exception, right? I'm originally from New <laughs> Zealand, but I, I haven't lived there for so many years. Um, so, and, and that's our point of difference because we, we figure it really is, you know, it really is only an Americano who knows how to deal with an Americano. You, you kind of know what's going on in the place. You know, you read into the language and everything else. Uh, and, and so our team are, are, uh, are more mature like me, work from home, which has been great with uh, all this uh, COVID brouhaha floating around the world. Um, and, and really there, working at a slower pace to really try to engage with those customers, get a relationship going, resolve the problem. Uh, and, uh, well, a five-star review is always a very nice uh, reward to get, isn't it? So, you know, please go through to that link, right? Zonsport.com forward slash Gatita. Grab that product insert. Uh, and then if you want to talk with us more, you know, you've got our details there. Yeah, so it's always great talking with Greg. And I really appreciate you being on the uh, Sellernomics podcast. Absolute pleasure having you on with lots of great information. So everybody's got lots of things they can work on. And of course you can contact Greg to get that checklist uh, through zonsupport.com forward slash Gatita. And uh, I will be on next week uh, back at home. So back on my steady internet connection. And uh, I appreciate everybody tuning in and sorry for the hiccup, but uh, we definitely will have a great uh, podcast uh, when it comes to stability of the network next week. Greg, thanks for being on. I really do appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Rob. Cheers. Thanks for joining us this week on the Sellernomics podcast. Special thanks to our sponsor, Gatita. Did you know that Amazon probably owes you money for FBA reimbursements? Get $400 in free FBA reimbursements at gatita.com slash Sellernomics. Be sure to join us again next week for more great tips on how to grow your business. And thanks again for listening.